Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and today we're going to be doing my first update in my Bits and Pieces project pan. This is a project that I created in an attempt to get a handle on my mini products. I have so many, I just stockpile them and then they never get used and that's ridiculous. Now many of you, if you have seen my intro, which I will have linked down in the description box below in case you missed it, um, you may know that the thing that really prompted me to put this together is the fact that I'm going to be moving sometime in 2022. My husband and I were fortunate enough to be able to start the process on building a new home and so it really has given me the, an opportunity to look at my home in an entirely new way because you guys, I have so much stuff. I have so much useless clutter, things that um, I just, I need to get through. So the bits part is going to be all of my miniature products. And then the pieces side are going to be items that are on their last legs. Like why do I still have this in my in my bathroom, in my vanity, whatever the case may be, when there is so little product left in it. So I started by picking out 50 items to start working on and I am updating this project every other month. I don't know exactly when it's going to conclude because it's just going to coincide with when we move. And if you have ever built a new home, you know that the um, timetable is a little bit loosey-goosey. We were told seven to nine months. So, once I know when we'll be moving, I'll be able to tell you when this product wrap, project rather wraps up. So I am only going to be talking about the items that I finished with one exception. I can't not talk about this product right here. This is such a weird product. This is from Dr. Jart. This is their night beauty balm. So with that description and the fact that it's a mini and I don't really know much about it, I just assumed that it was like a night cream, just a little bit thicker kind of balm-like. Um, I know slugging is very popular. This is a Korean brand if I'm not mistaken, so I just assumed it was an evening moisturizer. It's not. This is an actually a makeup product and the first time I used it I was so confused because, let me see, let me put a little bit out on the back of my hand real quick. So when I used it for the first time, I squeezed it out and you can see it's full of all of these little white spheres. I hope the camera is picking that up. Lots of little white spheres. So I just kind of thought that that was going to be like serum encapsulated or something like that. And then I started to blend it out. Don't mind my nails, they're terrible. Do you see? Those are pigments. Like, I, I, was, I was so confused because this is clearly makeup. This is clearly makeup. Where's my towel? Hold on. All right, all cleaned up. Um, so yeah, clearly this is makeup, which sent me down the rabbit hole of, okay, what is the purpose of this product? I'm so confused. Uh, it's intended to be makeup that you can sleep in. I have no idea why that's a thing. This product has actually been discontinued. It's no longer um, being produced, but wh why? I don't understand why there is makeup that is intended to be able to be slept in. So I will not be using it for that purpose. I'm actually, I think, going to use it as like a primer or maybe after my primer, but before my foundation. I'm honestly not sure how I'm going to use that product, but I couldn't not share it because it is one of the most bizarre things I have come in, come in contact with in a while. <laughs> so just wanted to share that with you. But okay, let's get on to all of the products that I have used up and talk about kind of my thoughts on them because I have a few, I have a few. Let's start with the one that is just hands down the most, the most, the most shocking. Like if you thought makeup that you're supposed to wear to bed was um, a shock, let's talk about this. Um, so I want to start out by saying that these are my opinions, that I have no formal training in chemistry, dermatology, anything of the sort. So these are just my personal opinions based on the experience that I had in using this product. This is from Dr. Barbara Sturm. I think that's how you say that. 
Um, this is a brand that's sold at Sephora. I want to also go on record as saying I did not pay for this. I don't know exactly where it came from. I honestly have no idea because this right here, this teeny little thing, this is 10 milliliters, which is 0.33 fluid ounces, retails for $110. This is a hyaluronic acid serum. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I, this is not a bad product. I am not in any way dragging the product itself. It was one that I enjoyed using. It went onto my skin very easily and nicely. It absorbed well. It didn't leave my skin feeling sticky. Um, it, it was it was a fine product. Do I understand why it is one hundred and ten dollars? I do not. I do not. Um, I didn't see anything revolutionary in my skin. I didn't, there was nothing about this product that made me want to repurchase it regardless of the price point. And then when I saw that, I uh, about hit the floor. The full size product, which is one fluid ounce, retails for $300. I, I'm just, I'm in shock. I, I cannot fathom spending that type of coin on a product that I honestly saw no benefit in. Again, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm not a chemist. There might have been some amazing things going on in my skin that I couldn't see. I have no way of knowing, but I um, saw no difference once I started using it versus when I stopped using it. So this is not a product for me and not one that I could possibly recommend at that price point. Um, there are lots of good hyaluronic acids out there that um, aren't going to set you back a car payment. The next item that I used up was actually my most recent. So this is from Laneige. This is the Moisture Cream Water Bank. Really liked this, which is kind of confusing because I feel like I've used up this product in kind of a jar form format and I, it was just okay. Whereas this one here in the squeezy tube, I really loved. I also used up this itty bitty sample of the Bum Bum Cream from Sol de Janeiro. <laughs> I love this, you guys. Of course I love it, of course I love it. I finished off a soy cleanser, fresh soy fresh cleanser. Very lovely, very nice, overpriced, but very nice. Ooh, something I didn't like. I didn't like this at all. This is from Smashbox. This is a sample of their Camera Ready BB Cream. Has an SPF of 35 in it, although I don't know how long I've had this for, so I certainly didn't rely on the SPF in it. This was in the shade Light, which was too deep for me. I had to mix it with lighter foundations in order for it not to look funky on me. But even then, I didn't love the way it sat on my skin. I did make sure to wear it on its own at least once so that um, I could form an opinion on it without different products sort of influencing that. Um, and whether I used it by itself or as a mix mixer, I just didn't really like the way it sat on my skin. So that for me is definitely a pass. Another pass, um, I did use up this little mini of the Kapari Coconut Melt. This is personal preference. Did it do a lovely job of breaking down my makeup? Yes. Did I have any problem with that whatsoever? No. Um, it's, it's kind of twofold for me. So I, you know, I'm a double cleanse kind of gal. I love my pharmacy green clean and I love products like that, that emulsify. So once you have used it to break down your makeup, splash a little water and it rinses away with things like coconut or coconut oil, which is all this is. This is a um, solid coconut oil. It's been refined about a million times so that it's really a lovely consistency. Um, you have to wipe it away using either like a cotton pad or a towel or something like that. And personally, I just don't enjoy that aspect because then now I've got something dirty that either needs to be thrown away or washed. And it's just not my personal preference. Also, I don't think my skin really loves straight up coconut oil. It tends to cause me breakouts even when using it as a first step cleanser um, and then going in with an, an additional cleanser afterwards. My skin just doesn't love it. So I'm glad that I used this up. I'm glad that I know I have an opinion on it, but that opinion is a pass for me. 
I used up this little mini of the Sunday Riley Tidal Brightening Enzyme Water Cream. This was weird. This was weird. And I have a full size of this that I got in some sort of subscription box. So usually with the water creams that I've tried in the past, they are a cream and then as soon as you put them on your face, once they make contact, they just melt down into this very watery consistency, hence the name. This didn't do that. This had a weird texture. This kind of had the texture of snot. It was very strange and I'm honestly not really looking forward to using up the full size. Obviously I will because I have it and um, it was fine. Like I, I didn't notice anything great with it but it didn't also upset my skin or anything like that it was just, it was a weird texture weird texture uh i did finish up my i think my last la mer sample all done i actually really like this product and i hate that i like this product because it is very expensive i don't know whether or not that price tag is warranted um but if like lottery ashley was shopping I would buy it. I would buy it. I also used up from Givenchy. This is just a sample of a balm. Finished it off completely empty. Actually quite enjoyed this. Uh, again, it's not something I'm going to purchase because it's a very expensive lip balm and there are wonderful lip balms at a more um, affordable price point so definitely enjoyed the fact that I got another lip product used up even if it's just a mini but probably not a repurchase. I use a busy bitty sample of my MAC Fix Plus which is honestly one of my very favorite makeup sprays and I loved it. I loved it. Honestly being so small like that it was kind of hard to control on my face so I used it for like foiling eyeshadows and it worked beautifully for that. And then the last thing in here that took me a lot longer to use than I expected is this teeny weeny little bitty sample of the Benefit Goof Proof. So this is the one that is kind of a, a wedge tear shape like that. Um, I'm really glad that I used it. It took me like a month to use this up. I really expected it to go much more quickly, but this is um, a stiffer, more waxy formula, which I do appreciate I don't love when you go through eyebrow products super super fast um, but I didn't really love the shape the color was wrong for me as well it's in the shade 3 I have a couple of precisely my brows that um, I feel like 3.5 is actually a much better shade it's what I'm wearing in my brows today actually and I just feel like it it's a cooler shade, whereas three is a little bit warmer and my eyebrows are naturally more ashy. So this shade didn't work for me, but honestly, the shape I didn't love as well. I have very, you, you guys have heard me go on and on about my eyebrows. I have very thin, sparse, over tweezed eyebrows. And so I found this difficult to control and that's why I like the precision for precisely my brow. So I'm glad that I have experience with this product now because I know that it's not for me. Um, and I also know that the shade is not for me either. So all around, I feel like it was good for that, but not something that I personally enjoyed. So those are the items that I have used up in this project. So that if you were keeping track at home was 10 of my 50 items. So I'm a fifth of the way through the items that I pulled aside for this project. Now, as I said in my intro video, if I use up all 50 products, then certainly I will start pulling more in, but I would like to get the majority of these 50 worked through before I start doing that. Um, I didn't want it to be full rolling so that I'm always working on 50 products because I feel like that's a little too overwhelming. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really happy with the progress that I have made so far. Um, it had also been kind of my idea to put up some pictures as far as how the build process is going. If I have any, I will put them up here. We went to the home site a few weeks ago to try to take some pictures, but there was lumber all over it from the house that's going up next door to what our house will be and we haven't had a chance to make it back out there with three very small children trying to pack them all into the vehicle so that we can go take pictures has been challenging also today is super overcast and rainy so 
hopefully we'll be able to get out there tomorrow and I'll have some pictures to insert here because I know that they have done some grading on the lot so it actually will look a little bit different than what it looked like in the photos that I took a couple of weeks ago so it's an exciting process and certainly as we get closer to when like the foundation goes down and the different aspects of the house are being built I'll be really excited to kind of share that with you guys during the updates for this project I think that'll be really really fun if you have enjoyed this project, let me know. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to join in and work through some of your itty bitty products or last leg products, I hope that you will do so. As always, everything that I am wearing will be linked in the description box below. And if you have not yet subscribed, I hope that you'll consider doing so. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you're having an amazing day and I will see you next time. Bye.